Hey everybody, welcome to Nikki Night. It is your host, Nikki. Yes, you cracked the code. It's me. I'm here just hanging out in my backyard. Um, I can't find my favorite sunglasses today, so the quays are gonna have to do. Um, it's a sad day though for the foster grants because I miss them. I'm not gonna lie. But these will do. I am gonna put them on occasionally though, you guys, today. Uh, because it is crazy bright out here. Super thrilled for my guest today, Graham Elliott. I can't wait to talk to him. I'm going to bring in Chef right now. For you. Amazing. I see the graphic. That's incredible. There you are. I was <laughs> waiting for it to turn into the real person. Yes, yes. It's a magic trick. Yes. Is there a way we can make you go this way? <laughs> Yay! Yay! I swear. How you doing? Zoom, I'm not part of the Zoom life yet, so. It's a, it's a way of life uh, now, and it's, um, it's very hard because I'm 31, and this is all just like, I was not, this was not made for me. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, obviously it's a crazy time, but uh, I, you know, FaceTime and, and Skype and stuff like that, but it's funny how Zoom is now, like, taken on the the almost like the word google you know like everyone knows what it is now yeah it's like i would say that and tiktok are the apps of of the coronavirus you know? you're right you're right i downloaded tiktok and, and have not tiktoked yet so i mean there's some interesting tiktoks and by the way can i just set, say that today I woke up, I was so excited for this interview, and then I was like, oh my God, my tooth hurt. I went to the dentist, he started a root canal, but my mouth, my lips are, they're still numb and they're going two so, different ways. That is incredible. <laughs> Do you see oh that? Not really. <laughs> it's like Kathy and Jimmy and Hocus Pocus. I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> That is so funny. Just we'll just tell everyone that it's like a, a camera TikTok filter that just does this. You know, and people will start now looking for it. They'll be like, "Where, where is that filter?" You're on. That's what you do. You you're setting the trend. Oh boy. Well, you are an incredible chef. I was just reading up on you. Three James Beard nominations. Yes. Yes. Always the bridesmaid. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Nomination, man. Don't feel bad. I am always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be the bride, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> That's funny. So you started, when did you start cooking? So at 17 uh, is when I started my professional career. So I was a, uh, a busboy and a dishwasher in Virginia. And uh, from there, went to cooking school and started working at a bunch of different restaurants, moved around the country, but um, have always been a fan of cooking, you know, and, and especially eating. Growing up in a, in a naval home, we traveled, you know, every two years, had to go to, you know, move to a new spot. So I was always exposed to, to a lot of things. I mean, my grandfather was in the Navy, so I definitely, I didn't live on, a, you know, a base. I have a hair on my face. Um, <laughs> He, I didn't live on a base with him, but I definitely saw a lot of that movement. And it's a lot. Was that a lot, like, in school as well as a kid? It seems like yeah. that. Yeah. Right, it, was, it was amazing. For me, what was, what was great was the ability to, uh, to constantly transform, you know, and reinvent myself. So I'm living in Hawaii, and I'm the surfer skater kid. And then I moved to Southern Maryland, and I can be, like, a cowboy. And then I can move over to, you know... Virginia and the, you know, the rap dude, whatever. It's like you can constantly um, evolve and find yourself and also escape, um, you know, from your tormentors. So, you know, I was not, I did not have a very enjoyable high school experience. So that made it, made it good to be able to, to pick up and, and run off. Let me tell you, my high school experience, I, the only thing that was my saving grace was theater. Okay. I mean, it saved me that and, and music um, and softball. But other than that, I mean, the kids, I grew up in a very um, wealthy neighborhood. I like to describe Great Neck as like, it kind of reminds me of like Pleasantville, but with a lot of money 
and just, you know, BMWs and yeah. arrogant people. Some of them are nice and they'll probably listen to this and be like, how could you say that we're rude? You're also the worst drivers in the world. So don't get me started. <laughs> but so before I totally just tell you what I really think of the town, let's figure that out first. But I mean, so it was hard and kids can be incredibly tough. And then once you add like certain and whole puberty it's just not a fun time but I found high school to be very trying as well but then once I found my niche I was like okay this is where I'm gonna live you can all do whatever you're gonna do you know? and you went to the you went to the same one for so I had an interesting old, old high school a freshman year I walked into Great Neck North and it was the most overwhelming feeling of my life it was like a thousand kids uh, like 30 kids in a class. I was so overwhelmed. I went home and I was like, mom, I'm miserable. So the beginning of sophomore year, I went and I transferred to an alternative high school, 50 kids, eight kids to a class. They like really, really honed in on what you wanted to do. We had, so, I mean, there was a recording studio in there. I used to record with my principal. So, you know, I That's think- so it's, cool. Yeah, it's a matter of the environment. I think an environment and a teacher can really change a kid's life. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, for me, I went to, you know, I guess three different high schools. I started in Hawaii for freshman year and then moved from there to uh, Southern Maryland, which was a absolute, you know, polar opposite. You you go from not just the weather and sunshine and beaches and everyone's just laid back to like very um, a very divided type of school and you know along race lines and uh, just a very hard place to fit in. And so um, I ended up becoming you know friends with a lot of the teachers, you know, and talking philosophy and books and and all these kind of things with them. Um, but, but yeah, survived that and then moved to uh, Virginia, Virginia Beach. And, uh, you know, that, that was the last part of high school. But then I eventually at 18, um, just I knew that I had wanted to cook and I had already been working in a restaurant and everything. So I got my GED and then went right into culinary school. So I didn't, uh, didn't finish my, my four-year high school program. Something tells me that that's okay. <laughs> I forget it. I did okay, but um, yeah. but no, it was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was very, very hard, um, especially that that middle part. You know, weight has always been an issue with me, and in, you know, it's weird. From in, in Hawaii, it wasn't an issue, and you're out surfing all day and skating, and then when you, you know, you're locked inside and for whatever reasons, now you're 14, 15, you know, and, and everything just kind of changes. But that weight gain coinciding with moving and being in a new high school, that was not uh, the most enjoyable thing, so. Yeah, I, I get that. You know, I've struggled with weight my entire life. I just decided, Graham, I was like, I'm just gonna make this crap work for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna go find like the one plus size character out there that sings and acts, you know, but that was kind of like, that was fate as well. But growing up, my grandparent, I, I came from um, like a very Middle Eastern European uh, heavy background, um, my grandparents. And my grandfather was like a big Czech man and weight was always there. I was never made to feel like I was ostracized or weird because uh -huh. of my size. But once I got into, you know, at school, obviously, once I got into Hollywood, I was like, oh boy, well, now you're really just <laughs> playing in the land of Barbies. You know? <laughs> but standing out and being different is really cool. And my weight's gone up, down, all around, and it always will, you know? But yeah. it's just a small facet of, you know, one of the layers to this onion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's the thing, though, is when you get through that hard part of, of growing up, then it's, you know, you're free and you kind of know who you are and, you know, it, it helps you with your humor and, and whatever else. But it's like at that point, it was, you know, but, but you also realize that the girl that was like, you know, drop dead gorgeous 
she felt horrible about these things. The, uh, the athlete guy was, you know, feeling insecure about this and that. Like everybody, that's what high school is. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what you were, you still, everybody had something they were going through, so. I loved my high school, high school years once I got to the alternative school, but I would not, no amount of money could make me go back to the middle school. Absolutely to the right. not. Oh, middle school? Middle school or like freshman year. Nope, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who was a mentor for you growing up that maybe inspired you or? Well, Let's see. I, I never stayed anywhere more than like, you know, two years. So I didn't have um, a mentor per se, but, but I've always looked up to my dad. You know, he's definitely been the guy in my life that I, uh, that, that I aspire to be. And also my mom's dad, my, my grandfather um, was another person that, that I really, really uh, looked up to. And in the chef world, I, I moved to Chicago when I was 22, uh, to work for a guy named Charlie Trotter and he ended up becoming like, you know, my, my mentor in the chef world. Um, as well as, you know, in the kitchen, you have, um, a CDC, which is the chef de cuisine, which is, the, you know, they run the day to day. And, um, Matthias Murgis was the, the chef de cuisine and was so important to me. I actually, my, my middle son's middle name is Matthias. So that was somebody that, you know, both, professionally and personally, just as far as how to like think about life and, and uh, the big scheme of things was, was hugely influential to me. So those are, those are the main people I'd say. That's really cool. I mean, you know, growing up, I had several, but now as I get older, I see the people with like, it's the ones that have like the long illustrious careers that are, that stand out to me now. Like as a kid, maybe the ones that I was like, Oh, they're cool. But once you realize like certain people have that je ne sais quoi or that like right. that just I mean, some people just have staying power, you know, whether it, whether yeah. they're whether they're in the entertainment business or not. Like I know my mentor just she stuck out and she has that staying power. It just stays in my mind where it's like I literally could be anywhere. I could be in the grocery store and I will not know what to choose. And I'll be like, what would Dr. Levy choose? <laughs> I just, I tossed it, I, everything up to what would Dr. Levy choose? <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. I, I think me this far. They're, they're, uh, you know, I, I did 10 seasons of, of MasterChef and being next to Gordon and just understanding the drive and the, uh, you know, the level of excellence that he approaches things with, just, just everything. It is one of those, um, obviously we cook completely different. We, we have our different approaches to, to leading and, and working with our team, you know, all, all of that and everybody right. does, but the, the decisiveness and the fact that it's like, no question, like, like this is the ship we're on. It's going this direction. That's it. You know, this is what we're doing here. And I think I'm the guy that will generally sit back and be like, well, there's a thousand ways we can go. If we go this way on the boat, then we're going to see a lot of sunshine. But I also like birds. And if we go that way, you know, so right. I have to sometimes like you're saying shopping, like I have to think like, okay, what would Gordon like that? We're buying that. You're going home. We're cooking this like done. And so I do try to think of all the people I've encountered along, uh, along the you know, journey and, and try to pick, the strengths of each one, you know, um, and, and kind of think, what would, what would they do in this moment? So I've seen you guys on that show and I love to watch the banter back and forth, but I love to watch the difference in like, cause the personalities, you guys are so different, but you complement each other so incredibly well. And I mm -hmm. love that. And I think that's what makes a good team. You know, you guys Absolutely. are like, you guys are like the John and Paul of cooking. <laughs> that's funny i just uh what was that movie walk hard i just saw the part where they're they're doing they're with the beatles in uh in india and he's like you two are so good i always think that i'm kind of like paul and you know paul and uh john mixed and then i'm the rest of my band is three ringos <laughs> and then <laughs> And then he looks at Ringo and he's like, no offense, Ringo. <laughs> yeah, poor Ringo has just taken a beating 
forever. This poor man is like, I have played on some of the most incredible tracks in the world. But I know. I know. And he's funny and, you know, sings, plays different instruments. But yeah, I guess when you're surrounded by people at, and you know, even higher level, everyone's going to always try to like rank you. That's the worst thing, you know, the, the ratings and rankings. It is. It's incredibly hard, especially when you're on reality TV or, you know, in any other, we are all open and subject to like, I've been going on TikTok and I've been seeing these people that have been like, they'll post something and then they'll do like a, this is why I made the video and like they'll comment and like make a video about the negative comments that they get. And I'm like, don't you realize that you are just feeding into the bullshit? Really? Yeah, I'm like, I am, if I do a TikTok and I'm about to make a 60 second video of myself acting like a buffoon, I'm not yeah. gonna tell the world why I did it. Just enjoy it, I'm not to be. Right, right, because yeah, then it seems too produced. Yes, and yeah. but there's always somebody out there that's always going to say something. There's always going to be a critic. I mean, how is what is that like getting critiques on, you know, a dish? Uh, yeah, I have really, really thin skin, so I fight back at everything. It was kind of like the, the the Trump before Trump thing, you know. I mean, and that sounds horrible, but I'm I'm saying like people used to say, you know, they would throw out sour grapes, you know, where it's oh, you got a, somebody gave you a bad review on Yelp and, uh, you know, I would fight back. And, and that used to be the thing, like, oh, you know, you're sour grapes, you're, you should just take it, you know, and no, I would challenge people to like sword fights and duels and arm wrestling content. I got kicked off Yelp, like, I mean, restaurant critic would come in and say something and I would, you know, get online and curse them out. And I mean, it was bad. So I do not, I do not, uh, you know, take that, that criticism really well. But I think that was also, you know, people are, you know, you're like a, a, a wine, like a fine wine where when you're, when you're young and inexperienced, you're acidic and tannic and angry. And then as you mellow out, you know, it's like you, you become better and softer and more like palatable. That. Yeah, exactly. Palatable. So I think that that's what happened. Like I started out really, really young. I was a chef de cuisine at 22 and then, um, you know, got, got a four-star restaurant at uh, uh, 26, 27. And so I, uh, I feel like I knew what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve and the style of food. Like I had all of that, but the emotional wherewithal to handle a lot of that stuff, I, I, I didn't. So I, I very much, uh, you know, would wear my heart on my sleeve. And then I also feel like as the chef, you're, you're, representing everyone behind you as far as, you know, sous chefs, uh, chef de parties, the dishwashers, the prep cooks, the server, you know, so if, if there's an attack on me or on the restaurant, it's an attack on these people that are working, you know, a billion hours a week for no pay and giving everything in the world, you know, uh, uh, to the cuisine and to the life of the restaurant. And so I feel like I have to go and defend them, you know, kind of like a coach in baseball you know, manager, sure. somebody gets, you know, hit by a pitch or they strike out and the, you know, even if they know, dude, you completely struck out. If the player thinks that they didn't, the, you know, the, the manager will run out and kick dirt on the umpire and scream out, you know, it's kind of like you have to, if you don't, you'll never get, you know, your team to respect you. You have to stand up for them. Of course. I mean, that reminds me of the story. My mother was my softball coach. Why okay. that decide, what the, Why that sounded like it was a good idea? I'll never know. Uh, and my father was the vice president, a uh, vice, uh, the, uh, the assistant coach, vice president. We're giving him <laughs> vice president of softball. <laughs> the vice president of his own mind. Let's just because let's let's be real. Karen Blonsky is the president of that mind. He's the VP. <laughs> but um, my mother was my coach, and then when I got hairspray, she didn't realize that on IMDb, you know when it they put up the news saying I was going to be in the movie. People were commenting and she didn't know that if you comment back, it comes up as your name. And so people were writing, why does a fat girl get to make out with Zac Efron? That's not. And my mom was like, let me tell you. And she went in. And no. I went on my IMDb page and it said Karen Blonsky. And there's like two paragraphs. And I'm like, 
I was mortified. That see, that's when you gotta like do your TikTok thing and come out and be like, this is why my mom posted this. Let me explain to you, like really. That's yeah. that's funny. Or this is why my mother's never allowed in my TikTok. <laughs> exactly. I am so afraid of her taking to the TikTok. That is great. <sighs> see, my my thing now, I'm I I mean, cooking has been so fun and rewarding. I, you know, I love to do it, but moving into like the whole Hollywood world was, it, it's so fascinating to me. I absolutely, um, not like, not like the, the Hollywood is fame part, but just production and like the, the idea of casting, you know, mapping out a story, camera work, you know, all of that stuff I think is, um, me and why are they calling me? It's you're important. It's your mom. It's definitely you not my mom. Her. And now it's like I hate that. I love that my laptop is connected. Um, but I also hate it at the same time because it kind of just leaves me with this. It's now, just providing a soundtrack. I, I have to wait for it to end. I know. I mean, does it ever end though? Because now like the little thing is going around in circles and this is embarrassing. Oh, now, I love it. Oh, I love it. No. This is not fun. Please stop calling me. Now it's just frozen. Now it's frozen. Yeah, okay, do you want to you, you call me back? I don't know why you won't hang up now. Oh, well, it hung up. Did I get it? Did it stop? It did. You're good? It was like that alarm yeah. that never stops in the morning and you're like, where did I set it in my house? Yeah, that's when I start screaming at Siri. Like, Siri, I don't, like, what did I do wrong? Just turn it off. So, like, <laughs> Siri this time was like, no, bitch, this is all you. Right. Yeah, it was actually Siri calling you. Like, I'm tired of you yelling at me all the time. Like, we're having a chat now. Intervention. I'm so sorry. But Siri what was, was not... oh. Watch, it was probably... So, I... <laughs> um, oh, so, so... As a chef and restaurant owner, right? You go yeah. from, like for, for me, my favorite thing was, okay, um, I'm going to do the menu. I designed the restaurant. I laid it out. I came up with the logo, the uniforms, the decor, the playlist, the, you know, all of these things. Cause I wanted it to be an extension of me, like no matter what. And I mean, I had a team and everyone contributes stuff, but you know, I didn't go and hire this architect and this design firm and this, whatever I, I, did what I wanted to do. And you're thinking of all the different stuff from, okay, the guests, how are they gonna experience the website? How is it when they call, when they walk in the room, what's the first thing they see? And so doing a TV show and seeing the same thing of like, okay, two contestants come down, then we send one home this way, then the cameras are gonna hit from over here and that's when we wanna introduce this and that, you know what I mean? It's like. I feel doing a show is the exact same thing. And um, I don't know, I just absolutely love the, um, the energy and all the behind the scenes stuff of, of TV, like production. I, I think that that's the, the coolest thing ever. Production is one of my favorite. I love to watch it. To, I love to watch us go from rehearsals to then sitting there like n nine months later, literally watching basically a baby you know like it was something that we worked Absolutely. on and created and here it was so i totally get that and i love to watch the whole thing but hollywood is it's got to it had to have been a very um interesting path going from like cooking because now food television is so massive i mean right. it's everywhere you turn i mean food network uh cooking channel travel channel i'm always watching right. travel channel and you know, so 
but it's really cool. It's really cool to watch. And it's really cool to watch the younger generation become obsessed with food and cooking. And, you know, it's really awesome to share. Yeah. I know I just have started to get down my mother's chicken parm. Oh, really? Yeah. What's, what's the secret? It's actually in her breading. She yeah. eats um, Keebler crackers. Ah, interesting. So, like, what's so cool, too, doing a, a cooking show where it's a competition, and it's like, you know, you've got Top Chef, which is professionals, and then you've got Master Chef, which is, like, at-home uh, cooks. You know, these are people that don't get paid. They get sent home. They're still going to cook, you know, and, and I love that. Um, but you, you learn things all the time. And one of the coolest things I ever saw was this, you know, they were making this amazing um, tomato sauce for a pasta dish. And when they're cooking on, you know, it's your olive oil, you throw in your garlic, you're, you know, toasting all these things off. They threw in um, anchovy fillets. And then when they had the tomato and all the other herbs and they made the sauce, it, it didn't taste fishy at all, but it's that like super concentrated umami flavor. And it was like, I never, thought about that but the way i look at food it's like okay well you use miso or you use bonito flakes you know in japanese cooking that gives you all this background flavor and it's a dried fish why wouldn't it be any different you know in another part of the world doing this or that and in thailand you use dried shrimp and a lot of things so it's it's one of those you step back and you're like this makes so much sense but for whatever reason it took me 30 years to ever have it cross my mind and so I love that, that you, you know, you're, it's a constant journey of learning and you never, ever, you know, have learned at all. I totally agree. I had anchovies for the first time when I was actually on Rocco Despirito's show. He had like oh, yeah. a dinner party show and, um, for Bravo. And I went <laughs> and I didn't know also that they give you like a glass of wine with each course and it was two <laughs> meals. We were looped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was hysterical. But I had anchovies for the first time, and they were delicious. And I was like, yeah. oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I love Rocco. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's so cool. And, like, my thing is no matter how, like, I'll finally feel like, yeah, I've been working out. I look, you know, I did my hair. I'm never, and then you stand next to Rocco, and you're like, God, I'm ugly. Like, I just never, you're never going to look Rocco good. So, oh gosh, I yeah. mean, there are some handsome chefs. You chefs are handsome and you also cook, which is like, you know, that just does it for everybody. So please, you're fine. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, what watching the eliminations is incredibly tough. What's one of the hardest goodbyes you've had to experience on the show? Yeah, the I mean, the, they're always hard. It's, the kids' ones are the, are the hardest, right? I mean, you've got. Top Chef Junior, Master Chef Junior, they're eight to 13 year olds. And we let them know every five minutes, like, look, you guys are the best. You're amazing. And it took you, you know, so much to get here, but there is only one winner. There's one trophy, one blue ribbon. You know, this isn't like, you know, your other school sports where all of you are winners. It's like, there is one. So you try to reiterate that all the time, but still, even if they, they, you know, look like, okay, I, I get it. I, uh, I didn't win. I'm going to go home and hold my head up high. Two minutes later, they're crying and all their friends are around them supporting. Uh, and it's, you know, I have three boys, um, seven, nine, and 13. And you, you can't not try to picture them in that, that same role, you know? So those are always, always very, you know, hard to, uh, to do. They seem it. But those kids are such pros, though. I'll tell you, they take it with, like, a stiff upper lip, and they're like, yep, this is this is the business, and I have to get you. So I'm like, oh, my God, you're yeah. 13. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And what's crazy, though, is you also realize that, like, you know, age 30 to 35 is, you know, it's whatever, 50 to 55. But, you know, 8 to 13, yeah. that is a massive difference. You know what I mean? If you're – eight or nine and you're cooking, you know, against the 12 or 13 year old, like, yeah, it's a 30 year life. And, and the fact that this person's traveled and, and eaten at all these restaurants and, and has a different, you know, skill set and level of experience than you do. I mean, you're, you're at a disadvantage from, from day one, you know, but I feel 
again, to go through thousands of, of contestants and, and become one of like the top 20 that actually get to be on the show. I mean, they already have, you know, one by being there. So I think that's, that's the good takeaway. Where's one of your favorite places that you've traveled because of cooking? Oh, every, every, every trip I do voluntarily, you know, that, that I get to choose is always based on food. So, you know, it's okay. I'm going to, I have a week off. I'm going to go to Europe and I'm going to map out, uh, you know, the, the, the six or, or seven spots that I want to go to and every spot I'm at, it's going to be, okay, where am I getting lunch? And then where am I getting dinner that, you know, that day. So, um, trying to, to hit a ton of things. I mean, I, I Joe Bassianich had this thing where he said, there's two people in the world, Italians and everyone else that wishes they were Italian. And I feel that that's true. Like, you know, France is great. And, you know, uh, Germany has this cuisine, whatever, you know, wherever you're in, in Europe, but Italy is, is everything. So, you know, you going, going there is, is always rewarding. You know, that's my, my favorite, but then Thailand, you know, is incredible and the Philippines and, um, you know, Hong Kong and China that, you know, every, every spot has its, its own amazing offerings. So, you know, that again is the coolest thing is I always say you realize that the planet is about 6 billion years old. And if we're lucky, we live to be like a hundred and it's gone in a second. And so I haven't been to the pyramids. I haven't been to Machu Picchu or down the Amazon. You know, I haven't been able to, to go through Greece and Turkey and all these areas. So, you know, I, I have uh, no reason to ever be bored because I have a million things on my checklist that I have to go and see and do and taste. Um, while I'm here, so. That's really awesome. I've traveled, but I, there are so many places that I have now. I've been to some incredible places, Australia, Switzerland. I had one of the best meals of my life. And it was- really? in, Yes, it was in Lugano, Switzerland. We were on like this little cobblestone street, tiny little spot in between France and Italy. And um, no menu at somebody's house, you're just sitting there at this big family style table and they say beef, veal, lamb, like those are your options. And um, I was like, I'll do veal. I probably shouldn't say that because well now Pika's gonna be on my ass. But um, <laughs> I had the veal, I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. And uh, I had it, it was the best veal I ever had in my life. But also they brought out this like saucer of like risotto. And it was the best risotto I've ever had. And it was so simple. And so sometimes it's, it's those little places, you know, and those, it's, I always say it's the hands that make it, you know? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good saying. I mean, it's true. I was, you know, I was, I love to think of not trends, but just how things evolve. And what I was reading is how, you know, Airbnb changed the world and, and you can go and travel and stay in these places. But what, the new thing is, is instead of going to this new restaurant when you go to Paris or, you know, you're in Switzerland, what people are doing now is um, you'll go and then find out that there is this, you know, grandma that cooks for 15 people at her house and it's just whatever she feels like making. And so people will go and, uh, you know, it's at six o'clock on Friday night and, and you've bought a ticket or whatever and you go and you're in their house eating whatever she went to the market and bought and cooked and you're meeting other people. But it's it's more authentic than anything you could ever find like in a restaurant, you know, and I think that people now want experiences more than than anything else. And so um, I think that that's going to be something that you'll see more of. Um, and I love that idea. You know, because it's it's one thing again to go and eat a restaurant, but to be able to go and eat the most authentic, real stuff, like you know, because they know where it's all from and where it's at, and she's cooking in her old cast iron pan, and you know, that sounds cool to me. Yeah, that's something that I would love and that I'd be into. I always try when I go um, abroad. I always tell them like, 
they're always like, well, let's take it to the best restaurant. I'm like, no, I don't have to go to the best. Like, right. just take me where, like, you guys like to eat, you know? Totally. Like, yeah, like, you, I just want a baguette and good salty butter, you know, yes. and prosciutto or whatever. I don't, I, I feel like you get to this thing where, and, and a lot of this is because of Instagram and how I can now click on what are the top 10 restaurants in the world, you know, as far as the, the award-winning list. And you can look at all those and, and basically you're now in the middle of Nebraska and your food looks identical to, you know, Noma and what they're doing in Copenhagen. And so um, I think you lose a ton of stuff, you know? So, so basically when you're at this huge Michelin fine dining level, Everyone has the same china, the same glassware. It's six courses. You start with caviar, followed by foie gras, and then a fish course and a meat course. Like, it's very predictable. And so, yeah, I want to go the total opposite. It'd be like if I was from, you know, somewhere in Europe and I came here, I'd be like, take me to the diner. Like, I want, you know, the greasy spoon, 3 a.m. meal. Like, that kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm in New York, and let me tell you, there is a diner, like, every single two blocks. There's, like, a, one of those silver, you can spot it a mile away. It's, yeah. like, 3,000 degrees in August if you touch it, you know. <laughs> but it has some of the best burgers, and I, I grew up going to those places. Every sing, after every show in high school, we would all go there, and I would get the same gyro wrap, and it still tastes the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are amazing. But uh, no, I, I, I mean, for me, I love road trips more than maybe anything. And, you know, I've been to all 50 states because I love getting in the car and just going and hitting different, different spots. But when you go through the, the south, the southeast, and you come across so many little diners or mom and pop places, like more than any other part of the country, they have them down there. And... Um, the service is so fun. You're usually eating at like some weird countertop bar top thing. Yeah. And you're watching the person cook it on like the flat top right there. But it's, it's such a cool experience and it's, it's so fun. You end up talking to everybody around you. And, um, I, do you ever I would, get tempted to, to pick up a, like, do you, do you ever want to just head back to the I, kitchen? I, no, no, no. Usually like what'll happen if I go, I have to like, take these off and like put this back and be like yeah bro like cool like I don't want them to know because a lot of times the uh the glasses give it away and people are like I you're that person on that show huh because because I noticed the glasses and then a lot of people get like intimidated to cook um so yeah I don't I don't ever want that like I I don't think I've ever complained about food like being salty or undercooked or you know I my biggest pet peeve is service I cannot stand people that are in the hospitality slash service industry that don't like people like it just blows my mind that that's a thing still so I cannot handle waiting 15 minutes for someone to stop by and say hello or you know don't they don't look at you as they're asking what you're gonna you know what's your order today and I don't know. That stuff, I, I, I get very upset. It ruins my whole day if I go to like Target and the person checking me out is talking to their friend as they're ringing me up and don't even say hi and then leave. I'm just like, this is mind blowing how upset I am today. <laughs> oh, I'm like I an know. old grandma. I'm just like, <laughs> well, because you're like, hello, hi, how you doing? Oh, you know, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I walked into, uh, I work at, I work at, I had to get a part-time job at Starbucks and there's this girl there who can't stand me. Oh, whoops. Oh no, I said it. Oh boy. And she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't like me. And I went to, I, I commented on her braids and I said, oh, your braids look so nice. When we went back for training, I said, your braids look so nice. And all, this is what I got. Welcome to Starbucks. What can I get for you? Over the uh, the the mouthpiece to the drive through yeah. And I said, oh, okay, that's how it's going to be. Okay, great. You have a nice day. And I just, like, why, though? If you hate people, stay home. That's what I, exactly. And I just, I always try to, you know, I'm a very, um, maybe it's because of the, the, the military upbringing, but, like, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, you know, Respectful how are you today? Yeah, man. just because I feel like it's the right thing to do, you know, like you should, 
want to ask people, you know, how are you? Oh, great. I hope that you have an amazing day. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. But the other day I was at 7-Eleven and the, the, the cashier, the person working there was like, you know, the most positive, amazing person. It was this, you know, this older lady and she was just like, how are you today? Yeah, it's beautiful out finally. Oh, that's so good. And I was like, I wanted to like call, you know, 7-Eleven CEO and be like, just so you know, the person that's working at this place is the coolest and you need to double their salary. My mother's done that a few times. She's been like, this waiter has gone above and beyond, mm -hmm. you know, or this salesperson. And it does, it makes a big difference. Oh yeah, I've done it on Twitter. I think the last time I did it was um, at the airport waiting to board and maybe there was a delay, but the, uh, the person at the gate for, for Southwest, you know, it's like the comedy routine and just, and just like so cool. And I, I literally, I went and got the, the name and everything and I tweeted, to Southwest and, uh, you know, just so you know, Steve at Midway Airport is just the coolest, you know, and um, they always reply right away. And, you know, same thing, I had an Uber driver that, you know, I mean, that's the, that, that needs to be its own TV show. Someone needs to do like real confessions of, of Uber because you could be the most introverted, weird, socially awkward person, but you're in a car ride for like eight and a half minutes and you're like, and that's why my wife left me. And I, I haven't talked to my son in years. And uh, you know, it's crazy. And then you're like, all right, I'll see you. And you're gone. It's like, it's like the weirdest little psych, you know, uh, uh, psychiatry appointment in somebody's weird Toyota. And uh, it's, <laughs> I just think it's amazing. And so, yeah, I had like the weirdest life discussion on the way to the airport with somebody, you know? I got pulled over in an Uber once on my way to work and I had to call up the store and tell them I was gonna be late because my Uber driver got pulled over by the cops. That is, uh, there's got to be, I thought about doing doing uh, the undercover Uber driver thing just so I could like start doing my journals and, and you know, ride share uh, uh, you know, TV idea or something, or, or memoirs, just the weirdest conversations. I would totally be down for it, and I would love to hear how people critique my driving, because I know I'm an awful driver. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, not one of my strong suits. I'm only four foot ten, so my, I have to sit on something to see over the wheel, <laughs> and, you know, I usually have to, like, make sure, like, the chair is, like, right up against my legs <laughs> can reach. I'm, yeah, when I drive, it's like grandma's in town and nobody wants to be in the car. That's funny. Yeah, I, I drive with, you know, my left knee steering so I can drum, you know, everywhere else and like sing along. So, yeah, I, I feel like I'm in this weird one man band that happens to be moving with four wheels. So <laughs> probably would not be very you know popular in the, in the driving world. Where can we keep up with you, Graham Elliott? Uh, on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at Graham Elliott. So that's G-R-A-H-A-M and then E-L-L-I-O-T. Everyone wants to end, add an extra T, but it's just one. But those, those are the main spots. So, uh, uh, you know, also Facebook, but that's um, the Graham Elliott. So I'm not a big Facebook person, I guess. I, I'm much more visual so instagram seems to be the the thing but i did download tiktok and maybe i'll figure out how to use it i don't know we'll the see best way to, to to do it yet how do you use it to get your message across it's i mean it's really fun i've seen chef uh, elizabeth faulkner on there making like Love some her. bomb dips and so she just makes it in a tiktok and then poof there it is it's great and so um, what if you have one minute is that what it is it's either 15, so uh, I have it here. I'll show yeah. you. I don't know if you could see it, but it's either like 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And like I did this one of myself and Joey Fatone yesterday. It's a duet. Oh, that's amazing. And so it's like either, it's either like 15 seconds or 60, and you can choose, and you just like lip sync to songs and. Two ridiculous dances that I can't uh, learn to save my life. That is funny. All right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do it. So yeah, I and will, I'll do that. Uh, it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm such a massive Master Chef fan, 
and I just think that what you do is great, and I, I see the way you are with kids, and they just look up to you, so. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this. This was super fun. Oh, you're super fun. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. Oh my God, how wonderful is he? It's so fun, you guys, and the phone call. Why, why do people call me when I'm doing chats and interviews? It seems like whenever, I'm gonna put these on now, whenever um, I'm on a really important phone call, my phone will go off, emails, everything starts pouring in. But I could sit here, you guys, for two hours in the morning by myself, phone will not ring. It'll be dead as a doornail, silent as a church mouse. I'll be like, hmm, nobody's, nobody's messaging me. Um, well, I guess I'm the only weirdo awake at this hour. But then as the day goes on, it starts to, you know, people start messaging me. But I'm like, why do we have to message in the middle of an important interview? I can't wait. But Graham, thank you so much. Thanks for handling it so great. Um, I know a lot of people were like, what the hell is going on over there? But you guys, I started this podcast from my backyard on Long Island. Um, I'm not uh, saying that I have some fancy establishment, but what I have is heart, and I'm having a blast doing this. So thank you so much, Graham Elliott. What a great chat. He's such a positive role model and enforcement for kids, and I see the way he is with these kids on Top Chef junior and on a master chef and he's just so good with them and they really idolize him and i idolize him i think he's great and he's just he's been a wonderful um advocate uh for all different kinds of communities and i just i adore him so thank you graham elliot you're wonderful we have a lot of incredible chats coming up um i'm super thrilled i'm having a great time doing this you guys thank you so much I'm super thrilled to announce that we knew we have an editor for the show. I'm so excited. Um, and now Diana can have a glass of wine. Diana, go have one. I bid you adieu. Go have two. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day from yours truly. Bye. Woohoo. I love to end with a little Katie Tunstall. Bye. Thanks, Graham.